Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how you can bleed your own car's brake system. Because realize, it absorbs water vapor. There's a lot of water vapor in the air we breathe. It contaminates the system over time. So it's a good idea to bleed them out every once in a while. I mean, maybe every five or six years. It's not that big of a deal. But if you let it go for a really long time, and it starts damaging the ABS system, and starts ruining the seals, you're not going to be a happy camper. Brake fluid doesn't cost much. You can easily do it yourself, like this. You can get an empty jug. This is a battery water adder. You can use a turkey baster, whatever you want. Go to the master cylinder. Take the top off. Now you'll see this little screen here. We want to take that and get it out of the way. Pinch it with pliers. Sometimes it just wriggles like mad. There it is. We got to get that out of the way. Then get your jug and suck the old fluid out. Suck it out. Then put that in the jug. And keep sucking until the container's empty. Takes a little while. Then get a fresh bottle of brake fluid. You can see this is fresh, the seal's still on it because you don't want to use old brake fluid. Just sitting around, guess what? It absorbs water vapor and then it could be no good. Buy yourself a fresh bottle. The seal's on, it's good. If you pull one off and the seal's already been opened, get rid of them and get one that has a solid seal. You don't want to have any water because that's what you're trying to get rid of. You don't want to add any to it. Then of course you fill it up. Put the filter screen back on put the top on. You want to keep the system sealed as long as possible. You don't want to have it open while you're working because then the water vapor comes in. Today it's kind of misty, rainy out today. You definitely want to keep it shut whenever possible. Now you want to bleed out the rest of the system. Now as a professional mechanic, I have vacuum systems that can suck it out. But odds are you're not going to have this. You're not going to have an air compressor to hook up to this so that it works. So I'm going to show you how you can do it manually. All you need is a giant screwdriver and a little imagination. We'll open the door, put the screwdriver on the brake pedal and pull the seat back. As you can see, it's now against the seat. All we got to do is move the seat up. This is a car that's still manual. So all you have to do is scoot it up. And now it's pressing the brakes nice and tight down here. So we can bleed the system out wheel by wheel. We start at the furthest from the master cylinder, which is the right rear. You do the right rear, then you do the left rear, then you do the right front, and then you do the left front when the master cylinder is by the drivers. You always go furthest to closest to bleed it out correctly. Now we'll get a map, jack the car up in here, and in this case, there's a nice big metal part we can jack it up on the back to get the whole car up in the air for the back. As you can see, both wheels are coming up. So we only have to do this once, we don't have to jack it up twice. Then when we go here, there's a brake caliper. We just have to find a bleeder valve. Hey, look around. There it is right here. We'll take the little rubber cover off and then get a hose so it doesn't make a mess. Now you put a wrench on it, then you get a tube that fits over the end. I actually have a tool that's connected to the tube that snaps right on. It just pushes over it. Snaps right on. Now we just have to pull the wrench to let the pressure out. Uh, there it goes. That let the pressure out. Then what you do is you close it. Once it's closed, no air can enter the system. You go back to your screwdriver. Back to the driver's seat and you want to release it. Then you want to put it back on. Then you tighten it up by pushing. Ugh. And now the pressure is back up. So we'll repeat this process of bleeding five or six times for each wheel. And let's say you don't have a hose, a little connector, it'll clip on the bleeder valve. You can just bleed it in the open and a little brake fluid will get on the ground. You could put a pan under there. And then when you're done where a little mess is made, you can just hose it off with water. Brake fluid really flushes good with water. It's a clear, clean fluid. It doesn't really do any kind of damage to concrete or anything. And if you don't want to search for hoses that fit on or it's too much hassle, you can just bleed it in the open. And then when you're done, hose it all off with a hose. And right, once you bleed to one side, put the little rubber cap back on. That's to keep dirt from getting inside it. A lot of times they're gone and lost, but hey, it's here in this case. So you might as well put the thing back on. Now you do the left rear, because that's the second closest one. You got to take that 
rubber tip off in this case it is kind of stuck on i'm wiggling it it can be a pain in the butt but there it is and we'll bleed this side the same way just remember do each one five or six times or so so you can get all the fluid out of both the caliper and the lines that feed it and of course chuck the master cylinder and top it up while you're bleeding because you don't want the air getting in the system because if you bleed the system the way i'm showing you by having pressure in the system open it up letting it bleed closing it down then picking up the brake pedal pushing it back down then opening it up again you won't get any air in the system because you don't want air in a modern system for one big reason this is anti-lock brakes this is the anti-lock brake module you get air in this system you will never get it out yourself now of course scotty can because i got a five thousand dollar scan tool that does bleeding of abs systems but if you're careful like i am here you won't introduce any air so you don't have to worry about bleeding air out you never want to get air into a system that has abs brakes remember that now we have to jack up the front end to bleed the front brakes now here's a trick I learned years ago. Since the jack's here and there's not much working room, we're just going to turn the wheel. Now we can easily access the brake, get to the bleeder valve right here, without having to crawl or get dirty. We push the screwdriver on the brake pedal. It's beeping because I got the key on so I can turn the wheel. And then reach in here and bleed it out. Just realize it's always hard to break them loose. <coughs> In this case, I'm going to have to use two hands. I can't hold the camera anymore. Now, you don't want to over tighten it and break something. So when you do put it back on, use a regular little wrench. You get it snug. That's good enough. Don't use a big giant one and pull as hard as you can to tighten it up or you might snap it off. Then you're in trouble. Always want to do the furthest to the closest. The right rear is the furthest. Left rear second furthest. Right rear is third furthest. And the closest to the master cylinder is this one. So we bleed this one last. Then we let it down. And the next time somebody wants to charge you a whole bunch of money to bleed your car's brakes, why not do it yourself? And here's some bonus questions and answers. Zacho wants a Scott, I love what you do. I got one more question. I'm young and confused. I have a 2010 Dodge Caliper, 163,000 miles, and I'm still paying $250 for nine more months. It was from a buy here paying no credit. Should I get rid of it and buy a Toyota or should I keep it? Well, one, you got royally screwed on that deal because those are horrible cars, those calibers. If you could possibly get rid of it, like let's say the place you bought it from has a Toyota and you can trade up and they'll take that piece of junk back. Go right ahead now if you can't are still paying on that thing my advice is just drive it and when you shut your car off and it runs on a little eventually it damages stuff but hey uh, as long as it runs and it goes down the road if you can't get any money or trade it in with them to a better car like a Toyota I just say drive the stupid thing until the wheels fall off and then get a Toyota and pray that the wheels don't fall off in the next nine months <laughs> Whew, especially with that mileage keep oil if it burns oil add the oil make sure it doesn't overheat check the coolant every once in a while and then pray Pray for the next nine months. Fan says, Scotty, I'm looking for a simple beater car to take around town for under three grand. Now, you're saying to go around town, you want a beater car for under three grand. Now, if you can find an older Corolla or Honda Civic in that price range, those things can run forever. Now, they're not that easy to find. They're going to be high mileage, but they can go a long time. But if you say a beater car for under three grand, it's going to be only in town. You can look at other stuff too, especially look at estate sales, look through Craigslist. One of the few things that people can get money for these days when they need cash in a hurry is selling their car. So somebody's in a pinch. Maybe you'll find something like uh, an old person that had a Buick and it's an older Buick, maybe 15, 20 years old, but it's got 50,000 miles or less on it. It can still be a decent beater car for driving around town in. And you definitely could get it for less than three grand. Those are the ones that a lot of people are looking out for a beater car i've had uh, a lot of customers get cars like that if it's for themselves it's usually the best i'm assuming it's for yourself because i had one customer to do that and he got an old buick and he got it for his daughter who was in high school and she was like hey i didn't want to be seeing this old buick in high school Ooh, it doesn't look good enough so he ended up giving her his car and he drove the old beater car back and forth to work instead so if it's for you and you don't care what it looks like, hey, you can look at stuff like that. That They're not the greatest, greatest cars, but for three grand, you get a beater car. It's got low mileage on it. It might last you quite some time. But if you can find a Corolla or a Honda Civic that's got a decent shape, at least, it might last you a really long time. Keith Sharona 95 says, I got a 2014 F-150. I had to replace the battery. And now the engine keeps stalling. Help. All that stuff's computerized. You take the battery out, put another battery in. The computer's confused because it was disconnected so it's got to relearn the idle 
Now from my experience with those, here's all you have to do. Let the engine idle for a couple of minutes with the AC turned off. Just let it sit there for two minutes. Get in, and I mean, if you got to put your foot on the gas, one foot on the gas, one on the brake when you're stopping, I guess. 15, 20 minutes to get on the highway. It should relearn itself. The last one I did like that, the guy changed his battery, same problem, and I just said, hey, watch this. I had some spare time, so I did it with him. And after about 15, 20 minutes driving the highway, came back, Stop, it idled perfectly fine. It should relearn itself. Now, if it doesn't, you're going to have to go to a mechanic, and we have the fancy computers that can reset. Oh, the idle learn, there's a little button that says reset idle learn. Yes, yes. Are you sure? Yes. And then it resets it, and it works perfectly fine. But that's set up for two and a half, three minutes of idling with the AC off, then drive it around, especially on a highway, for 15, 20 minutes, and it should reset itself. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.